what happens when Here we are, Friday's Hope. Hope everyone is well this evening. Welcome to Friday's Hope. Hope for Friday and beyond for everyone, everywhere, because it's about God's hope. I'm Sue Barnhart, mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and an ordained minister through the Worship Center Ministries here, here in Illinois. I put on the announcements this week expectation and disappointments. What do we do with that? That's tough, isn't it? Disappointments have always been hard for me. It started when I was a young girl and I was in the hospital a lot. And I discovered that the last surgery they were going to do was going to leave me wearing an appliance for the rest of my life. My expectation was to come out of that surgery normal again that the doctors could do anything, but that didn't happen. So from then on, disappointments were a big deal for me until I learned some things about them. Number one, I had to learn that disappointments were difficult for me. When things didn't go my way or the way I thought they should, I didn't realize or understand why I was so upset about it. Then I decided to pray and ask God why disappointments were so hard for me, why they were so difficult for me. And he reminded me of that little girl in the surgeon's office and the surgeon telling me that I was not going to be put back to normal. I was going to have to wear an appliance the rest of my life. So I want to encourage you, if disappointments are difficult for you, ask God why they're such a big deal or why they hurt so bad. Scripture says in Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds finds, and to him who knocks it will be open. This verse isn't just about applying things or finding things or getting things. It applies to everything in our life. <clears throat> so ask him. why, Or ask him about it because it is a big deal. Maybe it's something major that is a disappointment in your life. You don't know, but ask him. Ask how, you can, how he can help you and how you can get through it. I apologize. My uh, internet seems to be struggling today, so I do apologize if the video isn't as good as it could be. Number two, I had to learn that disappointments were just a small part of my life. Small part. Disappointments many times would take over my life or my attitude for the day, my outlook, my issues, outlook on people or things. It just became ugly. Disappointment became ugly. It became an issue that would cause my entire day to turn ugly for me. I had to learn that disappointments were a small part of my life. They also are, are many times everyday life. It, by the way, we're still living here on earth. They're going to be part of our life. See, when I was a little girl and that surgeon told me that I would not be normal anymore and what I, or what other people thought normal was, it took over my whole life because I had to learn different to learn to live differently. That's when I was 12. Now I'm 70. Did it change my life? Absolutely. But my life isn't ugly. I don't go around with a bad attitude all the time. It's just part of my life. Disappointments are a part of your life, but it doesn't have to be your whole life. It's just a part of life. God says in his word, Psalm 119.50, 
This is my comfort in my affliction, for your word has given me life. There again, there's over 7,000 promises in his word. He gives us life. He gives us the ability to get through things. Proverbs 3, 2, for length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. I had to learn that disappointments have to, didn't have, number three, I apologize, I got distracted. Number three, I had to learn that disappointments didn't have to take over my entire life. Granted, the first disappointment I experienced in my life did take over my entire life for a while. But I learned to live. Live a life. And that was only a portion of my life. See, I chose to live life as a new normal. And that particular decision by my surgeon was only going to be part of my life. I could still live a blessed life. God's word says in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19, I call heaven and earth as witnesses. I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. God continued to set life before me. God continues to set the choices before us. I can choose it to be a blessing or a cursing. Many people, when they have to live life with different certain circumstances, live life believing it's a cursing. In actuality, it can be a blessing. The situation that I have, I ran across a young lady that I've probably known for about 30 years now, maybe 25. She was working at a local store and I was talking to her a little bit. She's younger than me. She hung out with my kids when they were teenagers and, and she wasn't looking real healthy. And I asked her what was going on. Was she okay? And she started to tell me that she was sick and that she was going to maybe have the surgery and this particular surgery was terrible and she wasn't going to have the surgery. She didn't want to live like that the rest of her life. I looked at her. Now, mind you, she's seen me for 25, 30 years. And I said, I had that surgery when I was 12. And you've seen how I lived my life. She looked at me, her eyes wide. She saw how I lived life. She was in my house all the time with the other kids, with my own kids. And her whole face changed. Her whole attitude changed, her whole countenance changed because she saw somebody living life, not being discouraged or all grumpy, but living life with the very thing that she was being threatened to have. It changed her. It changed her. See the circumstances that you're going to through are going to change you. Yes, they are. They can change you for the better, and you can help others. Life can be difficult, but it can still be a blessing to you and to others. Number four, I had to learn that just because some did, something didn't happen the way I thought it was going to happen didn't mean that it may not happen later on or God had a better plan. No, my surgery did not get reversed, and I'm not... Quote, quote, normal, unquote, <laughs> but who is? <laughs> but I know there's things in my life that I have been disappointed by thinking that this was the way it was going to happen or that it was just not going to happen. It was going to be the end of life or it just wasn't going to happen. When in actuality, God's promises for your life are yes and amen. It may not happen the way we want it. It may not happen when we want it. But many times the very thing that we hoped for and wanted are answered by God in his way and his timing. And if it doesn't happen, he's able to work things out in our life. Maybe those things that didn't happen really weren't meant for you. 
Or maybe if it doesn't happen and that was meant for you, he will bring along something else that's even better and greater to help you through. He manages to work things out in our lives. His word says in John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. That's the grumpy part, the part where we get all upset when things don't work and we're disappointed. Jesus says, I have come that they, meaning us, may have life and may have it more abundantly. Do you believe that? Do you believe regardless of the circumstances and situations you've lived through, you are living through, you may live through, you can have life more abundantly? God says it. If God says it, then it's true and right. You can live life more abundantly. Physically, emotionally, Friday's Hope is about mental health. You can live abundantly in your mental health, even in the circumstances and the situation that we have. We can still live life more abundantly through Christ. It is possible. I promise you it is. Where's your mind? What are you thinking on? Are you thinking on his promises? Are you thinking on the circumstance and situation? Are you thinking on what God has done already? Or are you thinking on the difficulties? Are you thinking on the things that God says in his word? Are you believing his promises? Where's your head going? Your head follows your heart. Where's it going? You can live life more abundantly through Christ. Number five, he, help, he will help you walk through things and live life more abundantly anyway. 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 He gave me the ability as a little girl. He gave me the strength and the wisdom to live life in a new way. I'm 70 now. And as mentioned, I have children, eight grandchildren, three great-grandchildren. I'm blessed to be an ordained minister. I have an associate degree. I've traveled through most of the United States. I'm blessed to be financially sound. And for the most part, I'm healthy, unless some flu or something comes and gets me. I rebuke that in Jesus' name, not having it. So my life has had some struggles. You betcha. But God has gotten me through every single one of them. I've had disappointments, large and small. God has helped me walk through every single one of them. As it, um, have, the, have the disappointments hurt? Absolutely. Some of them hurt horribly. Took me a while to get over them. Here's the point, I was able to get through. Have I grieved over some of them? Yeah, you betcha. Took me a while to get over some of them. But my God was there in every single situation, helping me through, showing me how to live life, even through the pain. Exodus 33, 13 says, Now therefore I pray, if I found grace in your sight, show me now your way that I may know you and that I may find grace in your sight. Pray, talk to him, read his word, believe what he says. I'm telling you, it's a life changer and it will give you strength to get through. Psalm 16, 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is full of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. It doesn't say it's going to be all roses and, and cherries. It says, I'm going to show you the path of life. I'm going to have fullness of joy. You're going to give me pleasures forevermore. Psalm 25, 4, back to asking, Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. He'll show them. 
We might still go through some tough times. But if we, he shows us his ways, we're going to get through them. Disappointments are hard. Grief is hard. I know some of you have walked through some deep, deep, hurtful disappointments. I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry. One thing I do know is that God will always walk through with you. He loves you. He loves you with an everlasting love. John 15, 9, this is Jesus speaking. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. God's love for Jesus was unconditional, deep, intimate, always forever. Jesus' love for us is the same, unconditional, deep, forever, if we live and let him live there. Live in his love today. See yourself wrapped up in his arms during your difficult times. He knows the hurt. He understands the pain. Continue to go to him so he can help you and love you. And then leave it there. Leave that pain there. Don't keep thinking about it over and over. God's going to take care of it. Don't keep mulling on it, worrying over it, stewing over it. Once it comes back in your mind, give it right back to him. Keep giving it to him. Continually give his, all your cares to him. Cast all your cares on him because why? He cares for you. He loves you. When you cast something, you throw it off. You throw it away. You don't keep going out there getting it. Cast them off. Give them to them and keep doing it. Don't let that thought, that hurt come back. Many times there is a time when you should, when you need to see why it's happening. But then once you get those answers, Cast it away. You don't need to keep talking about it. You don't need to keep going over it in your head. Put his words, his promises in your head. Replace it. Replace those ugly thoughts and those hurts with his promises. Because they're yes and amen. 7,000 of them. Look, if you feel like you want to hurt yourself or others, or if you feel like you're stuck in a bad place, please, please, please call out to God. He says he will restore us, and then reach out to people. God uses people to help. I've asked people time and again over and over to do this. Don't stay stuck. Do what you need to do to get mentally healthy. God uses people. Call the hospital, call the Y, call your pastor, call your mental health clinic, your doctor, your psychiatrist. Call or text the Suicide Lifeline 988. Suicide Lifeline 988. Don't stay stuck where you are. There are so many places God has given us to get help. All you have to do is reach out. And I know reaching out is hard. I get it. But you're worth the risk of reaching out to get help. And so is everybody else around you. You're worth the risk of reaching out to get help. I want to encourage you, don't sit there day after day in that mire of mess. Reach out. Keep reaching out until you find the people that will help you that are a good fit for you. Just because one place or person doesn't work doesn't mean that it's hopeless. There are people out there just for you that God has designed and given to you to become whole, healed, and delivered. You deserve it. You don't deserve to live with that stuff in your head and sit around in that mess. You deserve life and life more abundantly. That's what God's given us. Don't sit any longer in that mess. Do what it takes to live an amazing life with Jesus. Reach out to God. Reach out to the people who will help you. 
We do it today. Don't put it off either. No more stalling. Do it today. If you feel this video has helped you or someone else, would you please share it? Let us know if and how we've helped. Our email is fridayshope3 at gmail.com. You can watch this and other videos on our YouTube channel, Friday's Hope. The link is at the top of this Facebook page. Most of all, would you please pray for me in this ministry? That's important to me. I thank you so much for your prayers, and thank you for listening. I pray God richly blesses you and heals your hurting heart and mind. I know he can do it. He's done it for me time and again. Until next week at 5 here on Friday's Hope, I love you and I'm praying for you. God bless you.